They were like some no-name CIS team back then, and Mag's Brood single-handedly won Vegas Squadron that tournament. I, I love the story that came out of that too, because I think it was one of Mag's fans that was like a Broodmother specialist, yep. played a whole bunch and of Brood in pub games, and he just like shot Mag a message, he's like, hey, you want me to teach you how to play Brood? So it was Mag and DK Phobos, who was Navi, I think, back then, or another, or VP Polar or something. Right. These two CIS players had the best Broods in competitive Dota, because they learned from this pub player. This, yeah, yeah, like yeah. really high-skilled 7K MMR pub player who was their friend and was like, hey guys, let me help teach you the tricks to play Brood better. And Brood is one of those heroes that is not like by paper, you know, it's not like, oh, Yules, LSA, Dragon Slave, yeah. Laguna, like this, you got to know how to micro your, your Broodlings or you need to know what build to go for. I, I talked about once yeah. you choose a spider build, once you choose the passive build, there's a like whole bunch of intricacy and, with this hero. And how to play, and I think the big thing that I remember Mag and DK was talking about was how to play some of those quote unquote bad matchups. Like how do you play Brood against the Axe and the Legion right, Commander, right, right, right. which were the two biggest counters. Yeah. And you can actually beat those heroes with Brood if you knew the right builds if you knew whether it was skill build whether it was item builds you could actually sure. play against those so it, it was kind of a cool lesson to pro dota players hey these pl pub players who spam this one hero 500 times they know a lot more about this hero than you do even if you're a better professional player and can maybe play a better competitive brute than them time. you have something to learn from these players for sure so everybody out there, go spam 500 games of techies, and then when it's added into captain's mode, dude, that oh, happened. Him. Yes. That, that was how AUI. He <laughs> yeah. learned. He learned from Peter's AUI. brother. Yeah. Peter's brother helped teach AUI how to play techies and win, win him a TI. Also, you know AI jungle that the uh, Coddle Ags. Yeah. That no credit, uh, not taking anything away from AI, but also learned it from like one of his pup friends. So yeah. a lot of stuff uh, you could glean from pup players. But back to this brew pick, right? I, I, I thought it would pick, was picked too soon because the, the brew pick locks in the puck as the mid, locks in the Lena as your support. support. There, yeah. Unless this is the next meta brew support that we're seeing. <laughs> well, uh, I wanted to bring up the go back even further to the idea that you said that Mag's a newer drafter. You know, they're kind of bringing him in. You don't necessarily think of him as a drafter, but so perhaps this is a newer experience for him. Is that maybe what we're kind of seeing here, here where he's picking something for himself almost that he's very comfortable with, despite them still having what now ends up being an Ember Spirit as, you know, good against the Spiders. You already mentioned Batrider Sand King, very good against that. So is that maybe that lack of experience coming in where he's getting too focused I mean, on his own pick here? I, I don't think so. I think it was a pocket strat. You know, it's yeah. like this... He's been obviously well-known for He hasn't pulled down a while. Be a best of one Dota. Yeah. There is an element of, I think it, there's some truth into that where it's like a comfort pick for him, but it's a comfort pick for him and probably his team as a whole believe in it. I don't think it's just like, oh, I'm going to pick myself saying that I'm good at. I think it's very much like they believe in this pocket strat to win them best of one. Yeah. That, that's how I look at the Brood pick. Brood historically has one of the highest win rate if you pick her as a fifth pick because that generally like messes up some lane, surprises the opponent to, uh, to be unable to be adapted. So Crazy. him picking fourth shows that he's got like a, a planned strategy. He's not like, oh, this is, oh my god, what I pick? Okay, let's pick Brew for myself. Damn. I, I doubt that's going to be the case. Feels like a pretty greedy last pick. Like, I, I think that they can still run Sand King uh, like against... I don't even know how they're going to lean this necessarily. You probably try and stick Sand King against the Brood, right? Five or seconds remaining. I, I can't really think of any other way that they deal with it super effectively. Because if you try and match up with Silencer as your support, he's just going to get eaten up once you get enough levels. I mean, if you put Ember in a safe lane, the Flame Guard will just burn the spiders down. What? What is happening? Arch the carrot. That's a support Sven. Okay, four position Sven. All right. They wanted a more early game carry, I guess, because Sven takes some time to kind of come online, and I guess they felt it was too greedy. No, they didn't want a Sven carry because Razor just eats him alive, right? So they just moved him away from the carry position. So this, like, makes sense. Now you got a little bit of early magic damage from Gyro and Lina and the Puck, so you're not, like, boned by the Razor Link. Um, I, I'm still worried about Link versus Broodmother in the mid game because, I mean, she, all she does is right click, right, in terms of damage output. So getting a Link on her is going to be tough. Here we go. drafts for sure. A Gyrocopter, a Broodmother. Man, am I happy to be casting some Ten Southeast Asian remaining. Dota right here. So we're going to be going right into the game. Luminous and Lyrical, appreciate it. Remaining. Your services are done for now. Myself and God's going to take over now going into the game right here. So Gyrocopter, obviously going to be in that safe lane. I mean, is there any potential for them to maybe go aggressive? Uh, ooh, I think you want the Brood is a hero that likes being up against multi like two heroes or three heroes. Uh, that's where the hero is at its kind of peak of 
annoyingness. Rude in 1v1s is sometimes okay if you get like a really good matchup. Like we saw some like unconventional, like uh, the old uh, team with Baby Knight, was it the, the Danish Cloud, Bears or whatever? Cloud 9 Danish Bears. Yeah, Cloud yeah. 9, whatever you want to call them. They used to run Brood mid against like Invokers and stuff yeah. when they had like a really good lane matchup. Um, but I think the idea, the, the typical idea with Brood is send it off lane and, and it's really hard for supports to deal with Brood. That Brood actually is like a support counter pick. Supports want to be active, they want to move around, they want to be active on the map. Against Brood, you're stuck and tied Prepare to that safe back. lane. That's the idea with Brood. So I think going for any other laning set for Mineski doesn't really make sense with that idea in mind. Well, we see up the bat right here. So obviously the smoke is put up, so it ends up being, uh, talk about the support options too, again with that final pick of the gyrocopter. Not only does support Alina earlier on, which again isn't that radical, but definitely not your everyday, and then Sven support is even more so unseen as far as that, that option goes. But obviously his skill set speaks for that it still could work. You know, he's a hard stun uh, with that Q, and then the war cry is definitely a good ability to have for mitigating the damage for you and your team, as well as chasing people down. So um, are you confident that these supports actually are going to be able to work for the Radiant side? Yeah, I'm not totally on board with the Sven Lina support too. I think there's Frozen obviously seconds. some good roaming yeah. potential. Uh, the chain sun is there, Lurkrow mentioned, like, as a dual lane, it's very good with a Sven carry. Same idea applies for a roaming support duo that smokes up, goes looking for kills, but typically you see, like, the support split up nowadays, like, one of them in the safe lane, one in the mid lane, moving, or well, one roaming around, like, it's normally one dedicated lane support and one dedicated roamer. Uh, that's going to be a different idea coming out from... Maneski, perhaps, depending on what Ryu exactly. looks to do with this Lina. Mm -hmm. uh, I am definitely curious to see how it works out. But I, I feel like Sven as a four position roamer doesn't get a whole lot done away from Lina. So we may just see these two heroes tied to this bottom lane, full on trial lane. They find Sam H early. They're going to stop him doing any pulls. And the key thing is don't let Batrider get his level two. We saw it last game. He shut down that Batrider early. He's playing catch up and just forced to farm the jungle and doesn't offer as much as he would like to. Yeah. Mid matchup, Puck versus Razor has begun right here. However, it's also going to be a silencer thrown in there. At least earlier on, looking to poke in some damage. So, silencer are going to be harassing the middle lane. Ember Spirit now headed back towards the top lane. Uh, Sand King's already getting a little bit of farm in the meantime while Ember Spirit's making its way up there. But, so they're basically, obviously, Brood Mother have been very difficult to deal with in the lane herself. So, silencer having a mid, that makes, uh, makes sense to you? Yeah, this is. Normally, I think if this was a different offlane, you'd see Silencer top and Sand King roaming slash hopping mid. But because of the matchup, Sand King will be more mid lanes, look to get some levels, use some pulls early on. Brood is, doesn't really start getting annoying and become a nuisance until like level 3. Uh, and that's where, for now, the supports will be trying to do some pulls in this top lane. Uh, Theban comes up, D Ward, Sand King's doing his pulls. So both supports for TNC. I, I think they've got a good solid early game plan. It's just going to come down to making sure that mag level three, level four, doesn't get out of control with a big spiderling army. Now, since we have Gyrocopter here, a hero again we don't get to see too often, so never going to have this discussion too much, but bring it up while we're in this early phase. An Aghanim Scepter on Gyrocopter. What are your thoughts on it, guys? Ah, it's not bad. Good farming item. It's gotten enough buffs that it's actually all right nowadays. So I think it's, I think it's a possibility. No, a lot of Talk to like Purge, he really likes the item. I think I, I mean, I've played Gyro quite a bit and I, I like playing the hero. I think it, it feels all right to get. You farm pretty fast. It's also nice because you get stunned, you still do damage, but it's not like a, a must buy. Item. Yeah. And so obviously at the start right here, having some very good free farm, but you see Broodmother at the top lane already 7 1 in that off lane. Obviously, again, doing very well. Batrider still without a creep kill yep. uh, himself. He is stacking though in the jungle right now, so. So he's going to be looking to do that in the near future. He's well and properly zoned out. I love just watching Mag play on this brood. He positions so well in the trees. He's just very good at being elusive and keeping away. Keeping his hero safe while using the spiderlings effectively. He's always over the trees. He sees Tim's come in with a dust. He knows, okay, I've just got to position so if he dust, I can run and use the trees as cover. Even though you get dusted, you're not going to get killed. He's just yeah. always hiding in fog. So the dust will not lead into a bar strike. You see, also just happens to be right on the outskirts of the Sentry Ward right there. So again, clearly the comfort factor coming into play. Going to use those sp the spawn spiderlings once again right there. But Tim's is just hunting around, seeing about <laughs> you're running into something here. But again, not the case. So yeah, going back to Max, obviously doing a fantastic job so far at the top lane. As he really expected. In the middle lane matchup, Cuckoo versus Mushi here. Cuckoo at 12-5, and 5, Mushi 11-0. Even despite that silencer harassment, it seems like Puck has actually had a pretty decent time here in the middle. Yep. 
definitely with the the boots can do all right here and you can always use your spells to last hit whenever you actually lose too much of your damage so that seems to be the, the case for the most part with Mushi getting all right here. He can't really deny, but at least he can get CS with his spells. Now, going back to the four support Sven here, is this kind of similar to the likes of something like a Sand King or, you know, Slaughter even, where they really want him to get that Blink Dagger? Do you make priority to get the Blink ASAP? Uh, less essential. I think Sven can oh, dust at top. Mag will not be caught yet. Oh, maybe. They're looking to run him down. Actually, Arcane's Curse put up. There's a Pearl Strike connects. And down he goes for the first blood. So it's about time, I'm sure, for TNC. That's what they're saying. But they find him and they do secure the kill. Yep. Um, yeah, back to the Sven. I think the this hero just naturally doesn't farm like a Sand King does. Because um, you can't really jungle with the Sandstorm or anything like that. So oh, Mage won't be in this bounty room. But the, the Blink is definitely like an item you go for. But you can get away with it later on because you've got Warcry for movement speed. You offer more to your team than just your stun. As a result, Mushi, he's fine. Pearl Strike was coming in, but obviously had the Illusory Orb, or maybe not so fine. Sammy trying to change that. Tim's also trying to get a range for that Pearl Strike. Oh, he takes a Storm Hammer to the face, though. He goes down. Mushi still not out of the woods just yet, though, and he's going to tick down to that burn from the Bat Rider. So, well, actually, Arcane's Curse, the one to do him in. Silencer, though, he will fall in return. Ryer on the support Lina. Gets the kill, so yeah. pretty back and forth right there. Yep, pretty back and forth, not too bad. Puck not having the phase shift there. It's like a very aggressive nuking build. You do see this. There's nothing wrong with this build. It just ends up costing him in that situation because he gets not just kicked by a Sand King, but also a freaking Bat Rider. He's probably like, oh, I'll get away from this Sand King with a nice orb play where he walked forward after orbing. It was a really good call from Mushi, but then there just happened to be a Bat Rider as well. And if he had a phase shift there, he likely can survive, but ultimately he was banking on his ability to, to juke those ganks without it. Rose and Tim's on the roam here, looking oh, for a gank make. at the bottom. Done. Middle lane, that there will be a go. kill on a Razor out of the bottom lane. Could be a kill on a Gyrocopter. He doesn't react quick enough, maybe some TP support, but you see Batman are kind of sneaking on up, and Ark knows something's up. The supports are missing, they, he get, they get pinged out actually. And he'll be fine for now. Nice time to attempt that gig from TNC. It was nighttime, the vision was limited, but Ark was in a really good spot in in fog when he popped the smoke, so they couldn't actually initiate onto him. And you don't really want to gank with you need your bat rider for that gank as well. If the two supports alone go into the gyrocopter, that level three rocket barrage can actually turn around and you can 1v2 the supports. So you need the bat rider to actually be going in with them. Yeah, level three rocket barrage even right now for the gyrocopter, so he does have support this time around in the Lena nearby, as you have both Silencer and Sand King still thinking about something, but Bounty Runes will spawn at six minutes, as well as that Illusion Rune, which Ninja Boogie on the Sven will pick up and send out for information down here at the bottom lane. But the supports of TNC have definitely found themselves a little less involved at the top lane now. They can leave Ember 1v1. What's going to happen is Brood's going to just creep skip the wave as we see with the spiderlings behind the tier one tower he also gets to farm the jungle but ember can deal with the creep wave just fine because of flame guard so ember with poor man shield he's got a bass he's got armor he can just take the creep wave use his flame guard to farm and once he's level six he can kind of tp home fire remnant back to lane he's kind of got unlimited sustain as well uh, in this matchup so he's more than okay 1v1 problem is brute's gonna free farm and brute can get a scary orca time they want this kill of Bowner, and damn it, they'll get it. Ember Spirit, he's TPing in. He will commit for it. Using the Remnant to go forward, trying to stop Gyrocopter, but they do not have a stopper and not enough damage to take him out either. So very good reaction, more so on Ark, to get out of their ASAP. So nice kill on the getaway. Ninja Boogie has to fall back too, which he'll be fine with. But that's that mix of the war cry and a decent range stun from the Stormhammer. If you don't play a hero that could destroy it easy, then you'll get caught. Top lane, Sam H may just die here. He's got no Firefly. Oh wow, yeah, he's gonna have to run right yeah. into them. The spiders come out. So Jeez. that that Ember TP bottom is such a high risk play because once you TP bottom, your tower theoretically just dies. You can't defend it. That's you're the hero that's meant to defend this tower. You TP out. You're not defending it. Bat Rider's like, oh crap, I gotta defend. There, there's a brute up there pushing, but he he had just died bottom after using Firefly, so it's on cooldown. He dies. Now Sand King has to TP up there. It's just this snowball effect of situations that you don't want to have to deal with. That you're forced to because of it. And there's a sentry. They're going to actually go in the Sand King with the Brood Sentry Ward. Yeah. That's a second kill to the Brood and a third TP top. Two 
three heroes have to TP top because Ember leaves the lane and they lose two of them and the tower almost dies. This is this is the brood effect in play. This is doing it and they're doing it one by one. I think that's the biggest mistake, right? Where especially against a brood mother, she'll she'll eat you up as we yeah. she shield right there. It's it's tough because you want I mean I, it, it sounds wrong to say like you kind of want to go one by one, but if you TP two three heroes, brood just runs away and True. then suddenly you've got two three heroes top. What's the point? You're not killing the brood. So you have to ideally find the right... That's where I think Ember just doesn't really want to leave that top lane or like a Sand King just wants to stay there alone. Uh, now that there's no more Sentry Ward, he, the Sand King can kind of sit there in Sandstorm. But ideally you just want one hero solo defending this top lane. Raven now finding himself trying to farm at the bottom lane currently. Arc though denying creeps in front of him and obviously somewhat of a difficult task. But now with the tower in play, should be able to pick up some CS right here, but Raven being at the bottom, I mean, does he need to get to a friendlier lane ASAP, or are you fine with him sitting down here trying to pick up farm for the time he's, being? He's fine in most lanes. He's definitely the hardest hero to kill. He's one of the strongest on the map right now on the dire side. In fact, the strongest if you look at just raw farm and uh, kind of his elusiveness. Uh, and that's where sending him to the offlane isn't a big problem. It's more the fact he's maybe best suited for dealing with the brood right now. But they're trying to leave Sanking up here 1v1, not so much because he can beat Mag. He's very behind on levels and farm, but because Sanking also needs levels. So Sanking being top is partially to deal with the Brood, but more so just to get levels. And Mag's brought himself another Sentry Ward. He may actually be able to kill off this Sanking if Tims isn't hit. Speaking of Brood again, it, this seems like it's pretty routine, right? He's going the Orchid. Yep. Uh, he also has a skill build, maxing out the webs as well as the Spider Link. So just pretty traditional stuff here for Mag. Nothing unusual against... Other matchups where there's less elusive heroes, you might not go for this Orchid. Like, there's definitely games where you look at where it's like, why would I get an Orchid this game? There's no Ember, Sand Kings, Pucks, whatever, Storms or whatever, but you're against Ember, you're against Sand King. Yeah. Orchid's great. Sentry, he sees top lane, he's going in for the kill. <laughs> and the Sand King misses the Burl Strike on top of that, and that's perhaps that movement speed coming into play of just having to try to guess right there at 486 movement speed. He jets on out of there, and he's more than fine, so... That's uh, difficult to kill in the first place on that Broodmother, so it gets away. Mac keeping the distraction up. Maybe not going to kill this time, but again, that's doing plenty in itself against TNC. And actually, Mineski finding themselves in a pretty decent spot here early on. No, it's still yep. very early, only 10 minutes of 2,000 net worth lead, but you also have the Gyrocopters. He's actually topping the net worth chart with the Broodmother here. Yeah, they're playing this early game very well. This is, it's definitely a hero that, I mean, I, I, in the past, whenever we saw a Brood game, those casters would always say, if you're not ahead early, if this brood isn't farming well, like, the pick has failed. It's meant to win you the early game. You're meant to have a good lane stage. The hero's problem is you get very farmed on brood, but then you give it back if you ever die and get ganked. So it's whether or not TNC can be successful in hunting down the brood that will determine how this game plays out. They're trying to hunt down the silencer right here, and a dream coil will make that happen absolutely. A little bit of support from Lena, but Mushi, credit for the kill and did uh, most of the work, to be fair. So... He has another 500 gold saved up. Mushi is, you know, down there. He's about fifth uh, fifth overall in the top net worth, but he's not far behind either, so it's not like he's really falling back. But you look at the top five, you know, three of the two blind to Mineski, and then it starts to drop off fairly more, uh, again, in Mineski's favor there. So trying to really keep the tempo up. What are we looking next for Puck, you think? Does he maybe get that blink here or something like that? He would have already gone for the Veil, I figure, but I guess yeah, I could still be. The fact he's going for the Treads, which is the unusual pickup here, means I imagine he will just go for the fast blink. Uh, I don't think you want to get the treads with the veil. It's just going to slow down your blink dagger too much. So likely Mushi just makes the big bigger jump now. I think interesting item pick up, which is also essential this game. Raven is rushing a Yule Scepter on Ember, not going for any boots of travel, uh, not going for any veil. He just knows he needs a solution to this silence, not just from the brew, but also the puck blink silence is also another way to hunt down this Ember. So I, yeah. I like the call to go for this fast Yule Scepter, assuming. He does commit to that one. Top lane, it looks like Batrider's running in. No blink, though, just yet. 1560 gold saved up, so he is working on it. Get in there, but Mag doing a good job of sneaking in that bounty room and running away quickly. As they're not going to give up just yet, though. Batrider's doing the jungle for the time being. It doesn't have any vision or detection on him, however, so I don't think he's getting it. Sinking does. It's just a matter of getting it off and landing a combo here, but. I don't really know. I mean, with the lasso and even an epicenter, then sure, they can get the kill. Yep, but getting those spells off is the tricky part. Mag is not going to uh, walk up to a creep wave. He only shows himself when he throws his nuke at the creeps from a very safe place. His positioning on this brood is always Dyer's on point. Speaking of positioning, Mushi Invis has gone behind enemy lines and will scout out the TP as well as the Ember's positioning. 
Yeah, seeing Razor come in, so they're setting up. They would like to have both of these, especially just one, if anything. But actually, Puck's going to be the one spotted first now. Lucy Orb just to get away here. And Mushi finding himself in a dangerous spot. Call down, use, try to zone them out, if anything. But Mushi will be finished off. Kuku does him in. It was a misplay from him, for sure. But top lane, they're going to look for a turn kill. Stable Hunger activated. The Spider's way over here. I don't know if that's just mismicromanagement or what, but... We'll kill that rider. To burn and I guess that makes sense, yeah. Like, they don't do enough damage and they weren't going to be able to chase. They may have just ended up body blocking, so it wasn't too bad. But misplay from Mushi. He was invis. He saw the two heroes. He just walked into them as his invis popped up. I imagine he just didn't realize how soon his invis was wearing off and just kind of got himself caught in an impossible position to outplay his opponent to get out of. So, bit of a mistake there, which does cost him. But now, bottom lane, great silence kills. Ember could not react to that one. Yeah, there was no way he was getting out of there between the Dream Quell and the winning Rift too quickly, and uh, even the best of players unable to make their way out of it. So, so Ember Spirit, his struggles somewhat continue as well. I mean, 1670 gold saved out towards that year, Yule Scepter even. I guess it's harsh to say struggles, but again, behind some of the other cores in this game. Broodmother, Orchid has been finished now, however, for him, and now looking to finish off the phase boots, but it, this is the other thing with Broodmother games, the rare times you see them, it, you just always kind of see them playing their own game. <laughs> That's no different here from Mag yeah. at the top. May change with the Orchid sometime in like around the 20 minute mark when Puck is a Blink Dagger. I think there's value in bringing the Brood with the rest of the team, using that Orchid as a Sanking or Ember Count or whatever it may be, but definitely as much as possible Brood wants to be playing alone, but walks into the Sentry, but does not get the Lasso off the Batrider. He's the Orchid first initially. Pearl Strike is coming in though. Dust goes out and they are going to catch up to him. He really want to make sure he's close enough and Actually, he does get taken out. Rose right there. Credit for the last hit. That's four heroes rotating up there, though, to make that kill happen. Now you see bottom tower and vulnerability is going to be Pop Cuckoo will port in. And they defend. Yep. Like what TNC are doing there. They've set up a sentry plus observer one in their jungle. And the key thing is they can find the brute's position. If you can't find the real brute, you're never going to be able to hunt her down. Oh. Really like to catch that razor, but again, just out now they guaranteed the tower kill right there. But that was a uh, dream call miss from Puck on top of the call down. Try to get the razor. Razor, look at that pick up there. The blade mill coming out as far as priority goes. It was an item that was picked up a lot against Gyrocopter in the past. I say in the past because Gyrus is not a pick we see much of since what, TI 6? No, TI 5, sorry. That was uh, the TI where Gyro was like every single game. It was the carry. Uh, CDC aggressive was playing him. Everyone was playing Gyrocopter. And it's because you can't actually stop the Blade Mail return damage. You see a cooldown coming. You see a ro Gyro running in with Rocket Barrage. You pop Blade Mail and it's impossible to dodge the Blade Mail return damage as a, as a Gyrocopter mm -hmm. once you've used those spells. We're going to play level 9. Lena ready to go. Smoking on in. They will catch Sans. He tried to destroy it right there with the Sandstorm. Burl Strike also gets himself away somewhat, but he still gets hit by the stun. And, oh, actually, it's going to be fine for now. Again, these are supports right here. Laguna Blade is going to be committed. Didn't want to use it if he didn't have to, but obviously the case in the end. But they get the kill. Again, two supports there. Taking out another in the Sand King. And AC Batrider just sitting behind it. That's actually pretty important, too, because that means that Blink Dagger does get delayed a little bit longer now for him here. Yeah, that's nice. That's the item which will help hunt down this brood and find kills. And the thing to slow it down is nice. Lasso up top. Yeah, gets the brood mother, but again, these supports are still nearby. LSA to help get the getaway for the brood, but Raven does not want him to get away. Roots, no, he gets sounds up by the orc, and he did get the root off initially. And Cuckoo here with that link to finish the job on a brood. And also trying to pick out the courier on top of that. There's nothing on the courier, but still would be nice to have, but I don't think they're going to chase too far. And that they did not. Middle tower, TP's coming in. Tim's just here to protect it. Will force a retreat out of Mushi and Ninja Boogie. But that's another kill on Brood, the second one, I want to say, of the game. The third one, even. Jeez. Yeah. They oh, killed the kill her once in the laning stage very early that's on. That's right. It, it didn't really feel like, like it killed that counter because she still kind of won the lane despite that death. But um, right now, the game is very even. Uh, I think TNC have done enough at, at killing the Brood a couple of times. If Brood still had just the one death, which was from the laning stage, you'd be saying this was like a, a perfectly played Brood game and that there's they're not dealing with her. But just these couple of kills... They add up. Brood is one of the, the more farm radiant cores. Uh, we're yet to see this gyrocopter 
able to rotate or contribute a whole lot, and I think part of that is because you're playing Gyro with Brood. Brood wants to be playing solo, Gyro kind of wants to be playing as a team. This is like Radiant's a team fighting carry hero, so the two ideas between these two heroes Dyer's doesn't always align, and that's where Gyro needs to play more with the puck. And mm -hmm. Mushi getting a Blink Dagger not at the best time means that wasn't really a possibility, but he's got Blink now, this is where Mineski want to kind of make some moves. May need to help the Gyrocopter down here as Barrow Rider roaming through the jungle. It's going to be spotted out, however, by the team. Stormhammer initiation. They catch him just on the cliff right here. The Dream Call also helped locking him in place in the LSA to be that third stun, really, to finish the job. Ryer on Lena. Credit for the last hit. So Sam H gets caught out. Now Tim's. He's just going to farm the jungle somewhat nearby, but not much he's going to be able to do on the Gyro by himself by any means. So in that case, not needing the Gyro, but yeah, perhaps a little more activity out of him again with that four staff now finished. And Looking to finish a full on Hurricane Pike as he purchased most of the components at least. Yep. Man, poor Silencer. Are you seeing him at top lane? He hasn't moved. <laughs> he's been here. Oh, he's moving. He's getting brave. He's he was running. there for a good minute. He's just like, I'm against a brood. I'm not leaving my tower. Yeah. This is my life. He's gonna go. He knows he's safe by his Observer Award plus Sentry, so he moves out a little bit. Oh. Having uh, Ember Spirit nearby too, maybe kind of helps, but actually Ember Spirit's the one that has to be careful right here. Actually choosing to use the Yules on the Broodmother, but he will fire Remnant out Interesting. before yeah. too much else happens. It's by using the Brood, you get to maybe farm some Spider Links, and you know you're not going to die, but same idea. That yeah, Ryder. Sam. Lasso catches Ryer here on a lean up. Four step maybe away. No, I guess it is on Koda. He does have the Hurricane Pike actually. Not going to use it, but the call down gets the one turn kill on the silence here. And now Bad Rider getting low as well. Here comes the Dream Call to help things out. Mushi. It's a two for one exchange in favor right now of Mineski, but Mushi falling back as no one else is here to help them out. And Ember Spirit trying to get close enough for getting off those searing chains, but Mushi keeping his distance. And it will be fine, but obviously good timing from Puck coming in there. This is the danger. The second you rotate for a team fight as TNC, Brood takes over top. He gets a tier 2 tower with both Ember and Batrider in the bottom lane. He knows there's only really a Sankey to deal with him, and Sankey alone has to be... He doesn't have a solution for that Orchid, so he can't easily get to that lane to defend, and Brood finally finishes off that tier 2. Pretty decent time. This is like normally what you'd expect out of Brood. If you haven't taken that tier 2 by 20 minutes, you'd say you're not... Brood hasn't achieved what you'd hope her to do. Uh, but the hero is definitely working so far in the Mineski draft, but they haven't, like, they're, they're not snowballing out of control. This is still anyone's game. Yeah, now working on that BKB as well, and really, as usual, but especially this game, it seems like a BKB is going to be very powerful for the Broodmother here. Not a whole lot they can do to him, or her in this case, when she has it up, so. Maybe nice item to pick up there. Razor, meanwhile, the Yasha has been finished. Speaking of nice item to follow up that Blade Mill as we stressed earlier, but a thousand more gold saved up on top of that. But again, you gave the logic behind that Blade Mill. Still a somewhat of a different order yeah, of build here. I mean, we, we haven't really seen Razor able to join the fights so much. I'm not sold that it was the best item pickup because this is, for TNC, this is kind of like a let's farm and go late game kind of game. So getting a Blade Mill doesn't really necessarily align with that philosophy. And we haven't really seen Razor leave this mid lane or bottom lane all too much. Razor's like, screw Brood, I don't deal with that hero. I'm staying mid, and if I need to, I might rotate bottom, but... I like this Yasha BKB build up. Get some carry items, get some scaling going. But the, the Blade Mel's an item, which didn't seem essential. Yes, Sven does have that Blink Dagger on top of the urn that he actually went first with the brown boots, yep. of course. He's doing well. Um, to kind of compare him to the Sanking. Sanking's got more farm, but he's had spider links. He's also been given more space. He's actually, it's the Bat Rider who's really poor on TNC side. Sam H is struggling to find anything. Oh, they thinking about finding something right here. Sam H will find, but no, he can't get the lasso off in time. And now Puck, however, is caught as he comes out with the Dream Call. That was a global science activated, perhaps helping to catch him right there. And they also get Lena on top of that. So a two for nothing. And they're going to be able to get the tier one mid at least as a result of all this, but yeah, the global silence, as you would expect, seemed like it did plenty of work right there in that fight. That was huge. Anytime they get a team fight with this global, TNC are gonna be able to, to win handily. Puck, I mean, the second I see that fight, I'm like, okay, Mineski can't do anything until Puck gets a duel. That's That's what that fight shows them, and I think Mineski instantly realized that. They're probably yeah. not gonna be looking to team fight, give Mushi some space, farm a Yule Scepter, or you just go smoke right away while global silence is down, uh, which is... Actually, not a, too bad of an idea. If they can get a smoke going right away, Sven has one on him. Uh, I think that would work quite quite nicely. But when Global's up, 
Pox has to have Yule Scepter or you're just going to lose a team fight horribly. Yeah, going to be in a bad spot. And, you know, I almost thought that was going to be pretty bad for TNC in the sense they really tried to jump the Gyrocopter right there, but he reacted nicely just in time with a four staff over the ledge away. Obviously, it's though the, the big picture. TNC, the two for one, including that puck kill, really won the fight for them in the end. But now Puck getting back towards the middle again. What's going to finish in that, that Yule's here? Not really. Look at a farm it though, instead he's going to be able to group up with his team and push this middle tower right here. Yeah, so kind of as and rather than smoke up, they're just going to push this mid tower. They know Global's down, so you don't need the Yules right this second. But once Global's back up, then we'll probably see them more fall back, take some more farm. It does feel like they're struggling to push this mid tier one tower for now, and they're also wary that they, they may not have ridden down the Global cooldown. Uh, some teams you'll see like. As soon as an ult is used, I'll pop the timer and make sure they take note of it. But it's it's very close to coming back up, just 25 seconds away. So they can't really team fight into that without the Yules. Now they're making their way towards the top lane right here. Puck and Sven heading up. Orchid applied to Sankey there, but Bradwiner puts the lasso out in return. The Burl Strike eventually going to be coming up, and out comes the Stormhammer as well as the Dream Quill. Lock it out, Sankey. Broodmother goes down, though, as Ember Spirit joins on it with a Flame Guard up, and it's going to be coming up in a couple seconds, in fact, and they'll finish off Sven to top it all off. A two-for-one exchange. Could be three-for-one if Mushi cannot get out of here. The Flame... Remnant not going to go oh. for it. He actually stuck around in the waiting rift. is not going to save him in the long run. He does have the face shift, but just delays it. Cuckoo with the double tap and a three for one exchange. 24 minutes in in favor of TNC. Really, another good team fight. They didn't even have to use global for that one. They just jumped the brood. They got on top of him. I mean, that's that's like okay. That's going to happen here and there. I'm not sure what Mushi's doing. He's he's just kind of off his game. He makes some mistakes there. Doesn't jaunt to his orb. I think he just got scared by the Ember Remnant, but you still just have to do what you can to join out. But now after the phase shift, he doesn't blink away. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you can... I'm not 100% sure, so I'm not going to... I don't like going fully call him out, but like if you are if you blink the direction you're facing, even with Ra Raze's Plasma Field, I believe you can still get that blink out, so... Oh. Not, either way, he definitely should have jaunted to that orb, and unfortunately, he gives an extra kill away to Mineski, uh, uh, to uh, TNC, and TNC... Uh, not just back in this game, but when you're kind of in this even gold state and the brute has been the brute threat has been quelled, you're feeling good. Like right now, you're like, yeah, you know this brute is kind of farmed, but she doesn't feel like a threat because you've stopped her breaking your high ground. You've got really good farm on all your heroes that can counter her, uh, and it's the gyro as like the next problem that you've got to address. But you've got good heroes to kind of deal with the gyro. You've got a bat rider lasso. You've got the razor static link. The late game gyro is not the scariest thing. Gyro also does not deal well with Ember because you haven't got good lockdown. This Ember is going to be very elusive and hard to kill. And I feel like going back to the the Broodmother here, you know, one, one reason that uh, maybe we don't see her a whole lot because at this top tier, teams do a good job of playing against her. As we've seen throughout this whole game, we made a comment earlier about they're paying attention to her. It's so easy to forget that the hero's in the game after maybe you take a fight at the bottom lane or you're looking to push two objectives yourself, and then all of a sudden, you know, your tier two, dare I say your tier three even goes down at the top lane as a result of that off lane or whatever it may be. So they're, they're doing a good job, though, of really paying attention. And, of course, on top of that, having the nice clear for the spiderlings yep. across the board is no doubt helping them, too. Tim's now with the gem. This is, like, the, the final step in eliminating the brood problem. You gank her a few times with dust, your obs plus sentry combos. Now you're at the point where once you've comfortably dealt with the brood and you feel like you're on top, buy a gem, take out all her vision, and make it so that she can never really show herself anywhere near this lane. And... We're going to see them yeah, pass the gem off to the bat right? I like this. Let the bat go do some hunting. See if he can find the, the brood. <laughs> well, he's going to find a little spider links that's, right here. And good cash. Burn this them is, down. That adds up quite a lot. That's like 120 gold or something right there. And this brood is starting to throw back some money that he took away from that top lane. Mm -hmm. Now you got Razor, the Manta style finished. Over club on top. Then you figure the BKB though. Inevitably going to be coming out as well. And also got Raven with his own blade mail now follow up in the Maelstrom into the full on Mjolnir. It's set to happen. So they're just going to have so they're going to have intense damage in, in just this AOE presence here. Silencer Midas too. So they've got the late game secured. You feel so good as a silencer now with like 27 minute Midas as a five position. You're just like sweet. You know you're <laughs> going to get levels, some farm for the late game off of this item. That's when the game well and truly feels like it's in your hands. It's a around a 1k gold lead, but it's a whole lot. It's a much bigger strategic lead in terms of the position they're in. Uh, TNC are the ones in a comfortable position. Mineski are the ones who have to make something happen. They just got this Jaro BKB. Puck as a Yules. 
their timing is now. Tim's trying to react. He will get caught by the Stormhammer as well as the Dream Quill, though. So quite a bit used right there, despite the early attempt for Tim's to get out. It's not the hero you're hoping for, and it may not lead to big objectives. Roshan would be, I think, uh, okay enough. Uh, this T1 mid tower would be all too bad as well. If he stole the gem, maybe that could have been a little bit better. Well, that would have been better, but as you mentioned and we saw earlier, Batrider, of course, got it instead, and so no gem to be had to at least benefit from that kill. But they will get the tower in the middle lane, Ninja Boogie. He's able to finish that off right there. And Broodmother will continue to go back towards the top lane. Now has the Diffusal Blade queued up herself. But yeah, we really haven't seen Brood get to use that instable hunger much this game. Yeah, uh, and she hasn't been fighting. It's been constantly split push. I'm curious to see how the the new like mid lane. Yeah, maybe they actually Razor. will get the chance right here. They're trying to catch up, but just look how fast Razor is running over 400 movements. Be the global signs oh. just in case to make the getaway happen and. Sure, it's a global science committed, but now in the back lines, you do have Raven coming in on that Ember Spirit. He's going to take the Laguna Blade to the face, though. Epicenter going out in the back lines, but that BKB coming up from Mag on the Brood Mother. And there's that Instable Hunger now yeah, activated, trying to finish off Sam H, but it can he just kites him away. Doing a good job with that Firefly in the four step over the ledge. Predator in the midst, or Cuckoo in the midst of this here on that Razor, the Eye of the Storm. Assisting a bit as well. The BKB up from Ark. The Dream Quill going to be back up and will catch Razor now and secure the chase onto him. So they do get a Razor Kill and the Ember Spirit picked off. Yeah, they turn around. They they use the last one, Brute, but they don't kill Mag, and that means he can then BKB and turn it around. He could have done so much more damage if he leveled up his talent mid-fight. He got level 20, I think, from the Ember Kill, and then he didn't get... Plus 70 attack speed is insane. Oh, wow. So much attack speed. But he just... He didn't level up. I mean, it's crazy. It's hectic, you know? It, stuff like that happens. You're not going to always notice that you leveled up in the middle of a team fight. You're focused on surviving, but... The one thing I was going to bring up before the fight broke out is I'm curious to see how this Brood actually goes as a late game here. In the past, Brood has always talked about you win the early game, you snowball, you push high ground early, you don't scale late game, but Brood's got some really nice late game talents. The plus 70 attack speed, 20% uh, cooldown reduction. I think that's going to be one of the highest cooldown reduction talents in the game, if not the very highest, um, which means shorter cooldown on your BKB, your Orchid, your ultimate. Uh, all of those things add up, and in the late game, Brood with the plus eight webs is a great fighting force. So I actually think Brood as a late game carry is a lot better than she used to be, and that's something where maybe Mineski can match up to the late game of TNC. Well, Tim's going to help them push back in the middle end, and Brood headed right back towards that top lane where it seems like her home is, but they will defend the tier two middle tower on top of that. And now Raven back to the bottom, trying to finish up the Maelstrom. And again, they eventually, the owner to come. But now Gyrocopter, uh, with the BKB, as we saw that last fight, another 1,800 gold saved up. Is there an item that you'd like to see on him here? Dare I say that Ags, as we were talking about earlier, or? What does he want, this game? Ooh, hard to say. I think he's got, he has, I don't think Ags is the item anymore. Um, I think that's more an early game item. You want, if you want to get it to help you farm a bit faster, I think at this point you're better off looking bigger. Um, the Lincoln's type build could be okay, but he's not really being grabbed himself, so he may just go damage, get Butterfly, um, get a, like a Maelstrom or something for himself. I think Scotty could be okay, but I think he just wants some like late game carry. Typical right click carry item is what I, I foresee him getting. Mm -hmm. Going towards the top lane here. Puck able to hit level 18 as well, so does have that level 3 Dream Coil now at this point, but smoke ink coming out from TNC, and they're going to catch that support, remember, here in this spin, so I really stressed that because well, we're leaves him as that core. It means this pickoff isn't nearly as crucial. Yeah, they probably aren't too phased by that unless they are going to be Im immediately you're like, okay, they're not pushing objectives, but can they get Roche yet? So I think that's the question if you're Mineski. Like, do we need to defend Roche? Are we fine? Let's push out these lanes. Let's thread on top with the Brood, but Definitely reaching that point where Brood is should not be a solo split push hero much anymore, except when like her spiderlings can go top lane. She, she wants to be fighting with the team now. BKB, Diffusal Orchid, level 22, definitely at a state where I think Brood continuing to go solo to this top lane will just result in feeding away more kills, more deaths, and that's not what you want out of Meg. Well, if she's stuck around another three, four seconds even, probably going to be the result of that uh, death right there, but yep. gets back at the top lane in time. Jaru will go for the X, so we'll see it. It's okay. a tanky item. It's not like a, it's it's a weird item because he's at that point where it's not going to help you farm that much faster. 
at this stage. Uh, it's more like maybe an early game farming item, but it's just stats. It's it's going to be okay for him. I think he looks at his team and says, my, my Puck and my Brute can deal some damage, so I don't need like the biggest carry late game item. There's no obvious item for me, for him to get, was the thing. Like, when you ask him to get, I'm just like, I, there's no, like, this yeah. is the item, so. Kind of all over the place right there. And But speaking of X2, Puck is actually going to be going for one himself. Huh. Oh, empty center bottom. Yeah, they are going to use it right here, trying to take out Puck. Speaking of him, face shift, though. Does he get out of this some way, somehow? No, he does not. Lasso to secure it. And down goes Mushi, so the Axe is going to be delayed a little bit more, but perhaps more importantly, about a minute before he resurrects with no buyback. Homing missile middle land on a Cuckoo, meanwhile. But he's a little bit too far. You probably don't want to engage right now if you are this Radiant side, because your puck is dead. Yep. He brings a lot to you. The Axe puck is definitely going to be nice against the, the Razor. Even when Cuckoo gets a BKB, which he may not even get at this point, it looks like he's queued up other items. You've got a way to stun him through that. Or at least a whole lot. Top lane? No, that's going to be a yield out. Global Silence gets baited out, though, so. Yep. Not too bad. Didn't need to use it. Ember had his yields, but. It's always scary when you see your, yeah, <laughs> your core like that being gone on. Even, yeah, he probably just saw the map and thought maybe the, like, Sven was about to blink stun, or the Lena was, like, invis with the stun radio, yeah. you know? It's just like a, it's, in your mind, it's like, why would Brute go in my Ember when Ember has a Yule? There must exactly, be a, yeah. a second hero there or something, but it, it was just like a, like you say, a bait. Mineski off of that, though, can push it, so that Global Silence does come at quite a hefty cost. Mineski secured themselves a nice little objective. This will be the first Roshan kill, so only the Aegis currently. But uh, who do you give it to? I, I, the Gyro or the... Uh, probably Gyro, looks like. He's a slow... Okay, he's on the slot. You can make an argument for Brood, but Brood's also a hero that if you res respawn without BKB, without ulti, you're not doing a whole, a whole lot in the fight, so. Jairus could save Cole. Needs a few more levels and a bit more farm, though, I feel like. He's definitely up there. You see his net worth. It's not like he's falling behind, but just like his level 20 talent could be nice. That accept is almost complete. He is going to hit a nice little power spike when he gets both of those. Yeah, speaking of Dryocopter, that 20% cooldown reduction, you're just mentioning how Broodmother having that as well, so up there with the uh, highest CDR as far as talent tree goes. Axe is also going to prove to be a popular pick this game, apparently. Sanking also out, now has his queued up as well. All right. That extra range. Yep. Helps get, get the puck and stuff. Nice super long range initiation. And we'll see Mineski smoking up now, down the mid lane. Three heroes smoking behind their gyro. Not a super wonky play, but something that could still succeed. Very common, you see like a carry hero in the front lines with a smoked up team behind him. Yeah. They're also hoping Razor win for that siege creep right there, but <laughs> Cuckoo a little too on top of that. He's like, yeah, something just doesn't feel right. They're missing on the map. I'm not going to go for it, so. Let me see the good call by him, and the Axe does eventually now get delivered to Gyrocopter, so has that gunner now to work with as well, and going to retreat after they get the Tier 2 tower here in the middle lane. Bottom tower being pushed out, though, by the Dire side. That's objective for them, and somebody gets cut. Oh, Sanking actually going up on the cliff right here. Yeah, they have no clue that he is there unless they place a ward. That's not happening. They're not going to check it, it looks like. So he'll just be a ward himself for now. Yep. I mean, Radiant don't really have any reason to check it. They don't have a gem. They don't have sentries. They're probably not expecting a ward there right now. Sanking gets a lot of intel out of it. And it leads to a bat rise. Lassoed up uh, Lena now. Empty center kill. There you go. Support Lena goes down. Can they get out? It looks like there's no Radiant heroes to punish this. And yeah, they'll get a kill. They'll get out. Not bad. Yeah. It does just feel like this game is still just going to drag. Play for the late game. Neither team seems close to reaching a point where they can take a big team fight or close things out just yet. So, late game Dota, here we go. Well, Razor has a Sheepos to help him going into that late game. Seems like a pretty good item, especially like uh, against the Brood Mother here. As he's going to get caught by a Dream Quell. This was the Storm Hammer initially, but the Four Staff over the ledge runs right into the Brood Mother, though. No Unstable Hunger activated just yet. It's still coming off cooldown, unfortunately. So can't really chase him down. Homing Missile is going to go off, but they're going to kill it before it gets to him. Yeah. The last seconds. Jump sniping that, and there we go. Yeah, Gyro's got level 20 with his axe now. Mineski were chasing 
like with that in mind like hey we're strong this gyro is ready to charge into absolutely anything and dish out a ton of damage Oof. problem was they can't chase with the double four stuff away that was such a good force to the high ground and then they had a, even after he got to the high ground he had another force to push him even further back it was some great defensive play from tnc we see about 20 more seconds before that dream call comes back up the top lane you can see tnc somebody was up here but as we can see on the mini-map, nobody now. Instead, they're all on the middle lane, pushing that out instead. There is still a tier two bottom at the bottom lane. We'll see if Mineski makes their way over there, if they want to try to siege here with the Sages. It's so tough to siege high ground with the Ember and the Radiant Razor, all this spam, but they, they've got an Aegis, so they may just chip it in and see what, how much damage they can do with a safe, like, Gyrocopter in the front lines, so just leave them up there alone. This goes out to harass. There we go. The sinking initiation nice on the force. Gyrocopter. Nice four step. He's being four stepped all over the place. That was three in total. And there's a last one to bring. He can't even control his own damn hero. In comes the Gosling though from Sven. They might actually kill Gyro, but remember he has the ages, so he's gonna come back up. The global science activated as well. And also a puck caught in the midst of it. He's dead for 75. No buyback in Civil Hunger though from Magda Laguna play to finish off Razor in the midst of it. He has a buyback if he finds it necessary, but it doesn't look like it will be. In fact, Ark has to get back, as does Mag. Tim's can he maybe catch the BKB is gonna wear off right there nice silence though with the Orchid to prevent him from the Burl Strike but they yules him up and they should be able to land it now and that's gonna be a pick on Ark as well so TNC not only holds but they dominate that fight against Mineski other than losing Razor really it's hard but it's one of those that's kind of why I felt like this game was just gonna go super late game because Mineski can't really see high ground though a bit surprised to see him go for it even with the Gyrocopter Age just doing it safe, safely and slowly He's in such high-risk position because a Batrider Lasso pulls you so deep into the TNC base. Even if he's hitting the Tier 4 towers, there's double 4 stuffs that can pull him into Tier 4s, and then they can kill him twice. So that Aegis does not necessarily mean you are safe to push high ground, and Maneski get heavily punished. It's where I just felt like this game, it, it, it probably should have just Maneski kept on farming. It's kind of like one of those things where it's like, we can't push, you want to farm, but in their yeah. minds it's what like, are they well, farming for? <laughs> what, yeah, what are we farming for? We've got an Aegis, aren't we theoretically like at one of our strongest points in us? They kind of are, but at the same time, I think they just need to keep on farming. Get Brood another item, get Sven some items so he can be a late game core. You need like that Lotus Orb against the Batrider. Uh, Sven has it queued up, I think having an anti Batrider item, be it a Lincoln's or a Lotus Orb, is essential right now, and that's something that Mineski do not have. So that, that's why I feel like, as much as they were at a peak, keep on farming. Yeah. Like, you just gotta play for, you need every little item, or every big item you can get to win this game if you're Mineski. And now you have Ember Spirit though, not only almost level 25, for his level 25 talent here, but then the Octarine Core are gonna be coming out on top of that. Oh man. For Ember Spirit, so yeah, he's gonna be really scary. Once that comes together for him, Razor's also close to level 25, and you see his options right here. I mean, 175 attack range. It's quite the distance, but I mean, static link damage, is that something that uh, you can I see? Think this, I've seen a bit of both, but I think static link is maybe a bit more common. Yeah. Uh, depends how much he feels he's just not getting static links off because of force stops. There's only the one force on the gyro, I believe, so I think static link is probably the way to go. Yeah, going back to that last fight, though, one other thing I wanted to mention was I know you had talked about Mushi early, you know, making the mistake. It seemed like at least at the top player where he ended up dying. Honestly, in that fight, it, he seemed to drop without getting a whole lot off. And it, as he jumped, like, in the middle of everyone, he also even had a haste room bottled up, I noticed, that he was unable to get off. So I'm not sure exactly what caught him, but clearly something did. And I mean, he, he was very quick to respond to the Batrider with his blink coil. He caught three or maybe four heroes in his coil. But he then blinks in for his combo and takes a ton of damage. I think he yeah. got rooted by like an Ember or caught, caught by the Global, for example. Um, silenced up, you know, like it's very, even if he yulzes himself up, then when he drops from the yules, he maybe gets instantly rooted. So there's so many spells, AOE spells flying around that can catch him. It's very hard for him to play these fights. Uh, and I think, yeah, again, Mineski, they're, they're going to get stronger as this game goes on. When they can deal with the Lasso through Lincolns, through Lotuses, also helps deal with the Global having a Lotus. Also, some of their level 25 talents are great. Puck, get that GPM. You're going to yeah. scale very well. Gyrocopter, Brood. Brood has hit 25. I think Gyro is another hero you want to see level 25 on this game. So uh, we'll see if they can get there because it just feels like TNC's team fight is too strong. And to beat their team fight, you need some. You need to outplay them through these items. Like, you need to get a Lincolns on a Lasso or a Lotus Orb off against the, the Global. Like, without these items, I think you can't win a team fight. Well, once again, Global Science is up. And, but Mineski. Not going to force anything. Obviously, we saw what happened last time. Going to probably wait for another Roshan attempt. If anything, that's probably going to be our next 
fight place unless they get caught uh, perhaps around the rune area or something like that. In fact, as I say that, wants a haste rune, but it's going to be snatched up by Raven. He actually had the invis rune already on him, and he was kind of hoping Mushi poured it in. Looking to steal it, but that's not the case. He's going to find Mushi nonetheless, so the root comes out. Nice waning rift, though, with the Yules. Going to prevent the initial burrow strike and the phase shift in the blink. He will get away this time around. He went up, though, actually, not towards his team, and they do find him, and he's dead for 80 seconds. This time he has a buyback at least, but nice pursuit from TNC. That's tough. You kind of have to blink the direction you're facing as a puck when you're phase shifted. That's kind of the, the issue uh, there. So he, he blinks to the north, and his team can't really bail him out, and Mushi may be forced to, to buy back here. There is a brute slight threat to the top lane, but Ember's there. He can clear it out, then Remnant, Remnant back in. Yeah, Ember's just going to again throw the Yules on himself. And as you mentioned, he's already back on the middle lane somewhat. He is now falling back here. Gonna give this up. The Axe Effect kicking in for Tim's. That range, though, it catches Lena completely off guard. And the four staff, as mentioned. Yeah, this entire team is using four stops incredibly well. TNC's team fight execution and four stop usage has been fantastic this game. And I think. More than anything, they are playing Mineski. I think Mineski had a good idea with their drops. Um, I mean, this game is far from over. There's still no racks down by any means, but what we're seeing so far is TNC just execute a whole lot better. Yeah, Lina will buy back, and once again, I stress it's support Lina right here, but she buys back, and it is enough for TNC to fall back. I think it's still a big deal because these supports need those items I've been talking about, like Lotuses and Lincolns. Lina had a Lincoln queued up. Sven still has this Lotus queued up. If these supports had the farm that we saw the Dire supports have, that would be a Lincoln's or a Lotus, and then those items will will theoretically win you a team fight if used at a perfect time. So yeah. I think these buybacks do still hurt them and their ability to go Lincoln. That's where it's now a 12k gold lead. But that push mid when Mineski at Aegis, it was like a 1 or 2k gold lead for TNC. It's been like a 10k gold swing since we saw that failed high ground push. Well, now we see it kind of comes together as expected. Pretty shortly after we talked about it last time, the level 25 Ember Spirit with that Octarine core now, all of a sudden, you know, all that cooldown reduction he has, that's going to be pretty damn nice. That's insane. He's, he's going to be a, a monster in these fights. So hard to bring down, and even if you go on him, he's, he's going to have life steal. Last of initiation, not a puck, and there's the global science right after the fact. Out comes a BKB from Ark. You got Broodmother that's getting caught, though. Mushi will barely survive with the face for the time being, but down goes Mag. He's dead for 100, no buyback. Mushi's still alive, but Sven also picked off. And the chase continues for TNC. They want Mushi dead, damn it. And they're going to get Mushi dead. He does have a buyback at 80 seconds resurrection. But without Brood for 85 right here, this could be the first tier 3 pushed in in this game right now. Yeah. They may be able to force a follow-up fight without Brood in a 5v4 scenario. They haven't got global, but it still feels like they're more than apt to just take a team fight here if they want to. Well, the stun once again, similar from before. The four staff's not going to get the kill this time around. They'll double Yule's effect. They'll avoid some more damage. And here he four staffs out of the base, actually. Lina's caught, but she has a shrine going to keep her alive just barely. But Silencer going to change that. Finishes oh, her off. She is staying dead. Burrow. The epicenter with the Burrow Strike as well. Catches Ark on the Gyrocopter. He dies. He buys back immediately, but not going to be the same for Sven. He will stay dead. And DNC trying to really go cutthroat here and finish the job. Yep. Ember will TP home. Heal himself back up, Remnant back in. They'll take another fight. They're not really backing off here, I feel. Maybe weighing on this Emperor. I, mean, I say that, maybe they will back off, but it seems like they should be fine. You're 5v2 here. No reason to, to fully retreat here. They yeah. can take the Shrine, but... Is it necessary? Wow, okay. Yeah. Okay, they're going to back off. You know, they'll play it safe. They feel like... I mean, they do have the late game. They've got a much better late game draft. And they'll respect Mineski, definitely for the formidable opponent that they are, but... Bit surprised to see them fully retreat there, but Ember can go back, fully heal up and reset, but other heroes like the Razor who is low cannot. The late game only gets harder. I, I love this Axe pickup from Tim's has allowed him to like really chase down Mushi. The, the Puck's elusive, you can see that. When he survives on 100 HP, he's able to phase, blink away, but mm -hmm. this super long range Burrow Strike is just so good at chasing after the Puck after those long orbs. And, well, Nesky are now in deep deep doo-doo. That's a nice way to put it. God's right there. Uh, yeah, you look at the buyback situation, they really have this window now, really of the next six minutes, because Lena's will be up in four and a half, but that's, again, not necessarily the biggest deal in the world. Really the next six minutes here to make a move to really push into the base and get a set of racks, if not a couple, and actually finish this game. So I'm sure they're going to realize that, or they're very aware of that even, and uh, they are going to make their moves 
coming out. But looks like maybe a couple more items they want, including a heart on Razor <laughs> is what he has queued up. Without taking a Rax, they're almost 30k gold ahead. It's not often you see that big of a lead without taking Rax. And considering the gold lead was zero, if you go back maybe 15 minutes. So very, very well played late game by TNC. Mineski, bit of a all-in smoke. Yeah, they, they need something out of this. And the problem is, I don't actually think this is going to... A kill here will not lead. They can't push high ground. You look at where all the dire creep waves are. They're all past the river. All they would have gotten if they got a kill was Roche. Instead of getting a kill, they're going to go straight into Roche. This is another kind of desperate play. And it looks like they will get this, but... Do it quick. TNC will come and fight them. Here comes Ember. There's the timing, though. They go in with the Searing Chains and a slide of fancy runs on it. Global Science comes out and Ark does get the Aegis on that gyrocopter. But Puck's in a bad spot from the beginning. He'll die, and he stays dead for the midst of this fight. Cuckoo, he gets his own BKB off in the midst of that call down. He'll start running now. The Static Link is still up 315 plus damage, and he's going to use that damage to turn in the face of both the Gyro and the Spin. Gyro dies. The Aegis popped pretty quickly right there. They did lose Batrider throughout this, but now Mag is caught. He's forced to fight here against, oh, the Epicenter actually does not get off in time from San King due to that Yules effect. The Rod of Atos locked down on Gyrocopter, meanwhile, as he's trying to maybe chase down and finish off the Sember Spirit, but the homing missile is up. And Gyro, nice job with the Yules, though. We'll avoid it. And he stays alive for now. Again, that Octarine Core, no doubt, helping him right here. He's going to fire Remnant away. And should... Never mind. Oh, wow. <laughs> Laguna play distance, man. He... I did not expect him to die there. I no. Think he didn't expect himself to die there. He was kind of just... It felt like he was playing with Mineski there, like, oh, I'll blink around, you got another homing missile, it's fine, I'm yeah. still going to live. And then it's like, oh, wait, no, he actually kind of outplayed himself. He had ways out of that one, he had more fire remnants he couldn't Radiant's use, he was a bit low on mana. Jeez. His Yules was still down, but ultimately not going to matter. Razor with the heart you mentioned is on the high ground now, 4k HP. Yeah, he had that pop in, so he just kind of reset himself. He got, he got Arc to actually use the cheese and almost killed him despite that. But the static link up to another almost 300 charges. But he'll finish off the green tracks instead, at least for now. Bottom lane, Sand King. He may end up dying with this unless the Yules get away somehow. Burl Strike coming up. Nice job with the Sandstorm initially. Burl Strike with that Axe effect. The distance man a four step away. And now he has Blink as soon as the urn goes off. He blinks away in time. It's like a carry now in this silencer. Yeah. This might just paying off You're right. big time. He's 15k net worth. Jeez. The farm on this man. Cuckoo, he's also got plenty of farm. Blade Mail with that heart standing his ground, of course, as you'd expect. Brewmother sells another 20 seconds before he's even up. So, I mean, you got to give credit to the Men Menesky in the sense that they aren't letting this game actually finish yet, and they, they haven't given up a melee racks yet, but they finally are going to lose one here. They'll hold on, Breaky, it. but it, it's kind of like, what are you holding on yeah. for? And that's where it's... They're not getting any closer to pulling themselves back in this game, and... Definitely had their own. If they were, I think going late game was fine. I mean, I think they were at disadvantage, but I think they could have gone late game if they kept farming. They tried to force the high ground play. They didn't maintain any level of farm on heroes. Like, instead of going back to like a farming build, I think the the urn blink was fine. But instead of this drums, he picked up like a mask of madness and started just farming some ancient stacks. Could have been different. Gyro rapier. Let's go. There we're talking. Now we got ourselves one last hole. All right. This is this is the all in play. This, is, of course, it's the CIS player in the game thrusting out a, a rapier on gyrocopter. Might as well give it a shot. Not expecting much out of this, but uh, yeah, you might as well as he he gets it delivered. You're trying to catch them off guard, just team wipe them, then push back. You know, anything can happen, right? No, they are going to fall back though. We'd love to get that level 25. I think often you see the pl the three homing missile charges. It's a really useful utility spell, even as a carry. But with the rapier, the, the plus four black cannon seems like the, the way to go. Oh yeah. But we'll see if he can get there before this next big fight. He actually hides the rapier for now. He doesn't want to reveal it. It's on the ground. The only thing with rapiers is I don't think that Korea can actually pick it up. It's kind of rapiers are weird with how they get passed around. The tool to teach. Oh yeah, he's gonna keep it hidden for the time being. And I don't think that they saw it. I think they did a pretty good job of making sure that they weren't aware, but is that really going to catch it? Look, we talked about the heart already, but across the board, they really are just so tanky. The Shiva's now on Sand King, even with 2,400 life save up, and he got his 50 health regen talent at level 25. Obviously, Octarine Core, Ember Spirit. So really, all these heroes are going to just be extra difficult to kill, even with the Divine Rapier, as odd as that may sound. See how long he wants to keep it hidden. He's picked it back up now. He may just decide to show it. Or even maybe just like moving it somewhere more convenient for himself. <laughs> Trying to leech that level 25 and see what happens next. There we go. He's just going to show up mid. Should be getting pinged out immediately. 
Yep, there they go. They ping it out indeed. And the Sand King, ooh, I thought he might have been looking to go right there, but obviously aware that he has support nearby. And you don't want to go too deep right here if you TNC. You have the game in your grasp. Really just a final push to finish it right here. Yep. And go one nothing in the group stages now. So trying to do that Mushi though. Doesn't want that to be. Call down comes out, but nice job four step away as it's been before. And Puck has to get away as the global sign still taking effect. Gyro. Dropped almost half-life. Jar is gonna get caught by the lasso. They just burn him down. That's a rapier on the ground. Now somebody got it. And it looks like I don't even know who, but it doesn't matter really. Does it, TNC? It's Silencer, of course. Silencer carry. got it. Yeah, no, he's turned into the actual carry for the team. His net worth with that is almost the highest. <laughs> that's the best part, but inflated by the rapier, that's uh, some end of rampage for Steven of all people. Says I'm the carry now. I'm the carry now. Look at me. There you go. Yeah, I mean, obviously at that point it was over, so but some yeah. flashy stuff to finish it off right there. TNC though.